Radio. We are Dream Lab. Welcome to the final episode of the season. Woo! 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 We had such a little wacky adventure. Oh, we got a little sound check still going on. I'm going to keep doing my introductions as we figure that out. So, this, this evening, we have quite the show for y'all tonight. So, we have a lovely musical guest, Steven. How do you pronounce that Hi. Hi, Steven. Hi, everyone. And we have beautiful, beautiful aerial artists joining our beautiful meditation tonight. We have Mary. Want to say your name? Hi, my name is uh, my name is Mary Irvin. Hello, nice to nice to be here. And Laurent, you want to come here and go say hello too? There we go. Hi there, my name is Laurent, and uh, yeah, hi. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, thank you for that yeah. resonating introduction. <laughs> well, I think well, I guess I should talk about a little. What is Dreamland? And what are we doing tonight? So, over the past course of this season, we have explored, delved into our dreams. With the first episode, we started building our dream world and working with different plant medicines and projection artists. In our second episode, we brought painters and started crafting a version of what we dream of who we are and by painting a mask of this dream version that we built. And this episode, we are bringing some aerial artists so we can activate our bodies and be able to bring about what is this dream version of ourselves and how are they going to move through this world. So, without further ado, should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. Beautiful.
here at home watching, we're just going to go through a quick stretch at the moment. If you want to just start by start moving your body around, just feeling a little bit of the music, a little bit of your environment. Move your arms up, down, move your neck around in a circle. Just start swaying and waking your body up. We want to feel like we're oiling every single joint in us. If you're not already standing, stand, start swaying. Just sway every which way, feeling those armpit joints, those elbow joints, your hip joints, your knee joints. Just making sure everything's a little woken up and there's no stiffness everywhere. So sway, keep swaying, sway to the music. Don't forget about your neck, your shoulders, feet. Get those feet out. And now with me, just shake it out. Shake it out. A little more violent movement. Shake, 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 shake. Shake. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake. Make your hair flow. Shake, 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 shake. And deep breath in and up. And deep breath out. Spread it down. Deep breath out. Up. In. Deep breath out. Take your arms, and we're gonna sway side to side, back and forth. Try to do this from your abdominals. Back and forth, back and forth. Choose one side, stretch all the way as you can, and up and over. You're gonna feel a stretch here in your obliques. Yeah, really lean into it, feel it. Your knees should be straight, but not completely locked. Oh, feel that stretch. Take your hands and go up. Oh, a big stretch. We're gonna go up, back up. We're gonna twist, and with a flat back, keep your legs straight, your back flat, and just stretch out. You should feel it really in your back here. Take your left knee, bend. You'll feel a little stretch in your hands. Up and another back bend. And all the way down. Now you should feel the stretch in your hamstrings. Move with it a little bit. Don't be stuck. Move, sway a little bit. Feel the stretch. Loosen your joints. Take your left knee, bend. Really feel it in your hamstring, your inner hamstrings as well. Straighten. All right, to the middle. Nod your head, yes. Yes. Nod. Move your head, no. Shake, no. Bend your knees. Down and up. Down and up. And now from the back, we're going to roll up. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Our neck being the very last one. All right, let's find our sway a little more. Vertebrae by vertebrae. 
pray one more time. stretch if you want. If you want that extra little stretch here. And release. Shoulders. Lay once more again. Alright, we're going to work on our neck a little bit. So just start by taking your hands, putting them together. A little prayer. Put it behind your back, your neck, your head, and just gently go down. Stretching out our neck a little bit move side to side. The same thing, push it a little bit on the right side. We'll push it to the left side. And then we'll just look up. And then you can go side to side. Alright, let's follow that with some neck rolls. So just to the right. Down, right, up, left, down, other way. Now we're going left, up, right, down, left, up, right, down. All right, um, audience, anything else you guys want to stretch? Down dog. Like, yeah, let's do some down dog. Uh, let's go through a, a quick vinyasa then. So we're gonna start here, in a little uh, mountain pose. We're gonna go up and breathe in. And breathe out and go down. Knees bent. And straight look forward. And down, knees bent. You can either walk or jump into your, your plank. And then we'll go into Chaturanga, which is your Elbows bend down, 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 and then push the upward dog. If you can't do upward dog, you can do your cobra. That's okay too. But upward dog, and then we'll go into downward dog. Really focus on pushing your shoulders back, your butt up. You can pedal out your feet. And then walk your feet up to your hands. Feel that stretch. And then go roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. Let's uh, we can quickly do a runner's lunge. Do you want to go for vinyasa? Or... Yeah, let's, let's do, we'll do some vinyasa into our runner's lunge. Again, we're going to breathe in and out. You should go down. Hands on the ground, knees bent. Straighten, look forward. Hands on the ground, knees bent. Walk or jump to your plank. Chaturanga. Into upward dog. Then to downward dog. Breathe out. We're going to take 
our right foot up, and we're going to place it between our hands, just like this. Start to loosen the joints, rock back and forth, back and forth, you can even do side to side if you want, back and forth. Take your right hand and twist up. Down. We're actually going to take um, our right foot, actually our back foot, and we're going to go up to stretch the hamstrings once again. We can rock back and forth between our standing split and our calf stretch here. Straighten again. We'll go back down to our runner's lunge. And since we are doing aerial, we'll do a quick blizzard. You take your, your knee, push it out, and both hands go on the left side of your foot. If you can, you can come to forearm and really go back and forth to, to grease up your, your hip joint. Making us really in there. There you go. Great job. <laughs> All right, back up on the other side again. We're going to go to plank and down to our chaturanga, to our upward dog, back to downward dog. We're going to walk the feet to our hands and roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. Move your shoulders a bit, get your head, make sure your neck feels good. We'll go into our last vinyasa, our last stretch. All right, breathe in, up, pull down. Hands on the ground, knees bent, straight, and forward. Hands down, knees bent, walk or jump to your plank. And down, chaturanga. Left foot up this time and put it between our feet. The exact same stretch as we just did, back and forth to loosen our, our hip joints. Side to side if you want, back and forth. Take your left hand, twist up. Really feel that in your back. Little circle if you want. Go behind. back up and down. We're going to take our, our right foot, bring it up straight, stretch a little bit here, go between our, our calf stretch and our standing split, back and forth, back and forth, and back down to our runner's lunge. All right. The lizard pose again. Put both of your hands on the right side of your foot. Twist that knee out. If you can, you can put your elbow or forearms down and just go back and forth, really greasing that hip joint, really feeling the stretch. If it's too much for you, you can stay on your hands. It's all about your body, your movement, and preparing us for this meditation and sound healing. All right, hands back. With, with your leg in between, you're going to go back to your, your plank, down for chaturanga, up dog, into your downward dog, last one, really, really feel that, get into it, feel the stretch, and then walk your hands up for your final roll up. feel good. I feel very free. Thank you for this wonderful music and excited for the rest of the night. Thank you.
take a comfortable seated position, or you can be laying down, whatever feels best for your body in this moment. This meditation is going to focus on a deep awareness of the body. Previously, we explored our unconscious mind as far as exploring its visions, the visual aspect. In this meditation, we're going to explore the sensory, how the unconscious manifests itself in the body. The body stores a lot of the trauma that we experience, manifests itself as tension or chronic pain in certain parts of the body. Deeply seated insecurities and emotions may take the form of back pain or pains in your heart. This is all unconscious material. And in this meditation, we have the intention of reuniting with these unconscious parts of ourselves, bringing them from the unconscious into our conscious light of awareness. And so this is a self-love meditation for the body. We start by gaining some awareness of the body in the room. Take stock of how your body feels right now in this moment. Does it feel tight, loose? Maybe there are conflicting parts of the body. We're not trying to manipulate anything here. We're just allowing it to be as it naturally is. You can imagine an orb of light contracting and expanding in your heart with its beat, with its rhythm. Notice how the beating of your heart feels in this moment. Notice how the flowing of your breath feels in this moment. Cultivating a sense of gratitude for the body itself, for how spontaneous it is, for how effortless it is for our heart to beat, for our breath to flow this beautiful abundance of life within us. This infinite potential for growth and expansion. Feel yourself coming into closer contact with your body. As the boundaries between your body and your mind begin to become more porous, they merge together as one. insecurities can take the form 
rise up into consciousness, to show us what they need from us, to show us how we can heal ourselves. Your job is to just be aware of what's happening inside of your body right now. What does it feel like? What texture is it? Is there anything that it's trying to communicate to you? So often, our body is intensely trying to communicate to us, and we push it away, either by quick fixes, distractions, addictions, to turn us away from the signal that our body is trying to give us. So in this meditation, we don't turn away anymore from the body. We come close as possible to ask, what is it that you need from me? Ask your heart, what is it that you need from me? To ask your mind, what is it that you need from me? Just notice what happens. The body has a distinct way of communicating and each person's body has its own way of communicating. Tune yourself into that frequency. Allow yourself to be an open vessel, an open container in which phenomena can arise. You are just the witness, the loving witness. the score of all of our history, but it also holds the potential for our future. So when we come into close contact with our entire body, our entire being, we can not only restore the love that was once taken away from it, but we can even increase the amount of love, increase the potential for connection and harmony with our body and how our body interacts with others and acts in the world. In each part of the body, if you look close enough, you'll find something extraordinary. Often you hit a point of resistance, but if you keep going through that resistance, you'll find the release You'll find the love. So whatever your body is telling you right now, allow yourself to be as open as possible to it, as loving as possible to it. You can ask, what do you need from me? What has been taken away from you? How can I best serve you? Not only in meditation and in waking state consciousness can we interact with the body, but also in our dreams. Our dreams give us powerful indications 
of the latent, dormant, and unconscious content, the parts of ourselves that long for and strive for reconnection, for wholeness. Imagine this orb, this light of color pouring its healing energy throughout the body and feel your body expanding, feeling the boundaries between the body and mind dissipating, heart expanding, body expanding, filling up with light and love.
this seat of awareness, continuing to notice all the phenomena that arise, the sensations of the body, the emotions stored in the body, the pain stored in the body. Alchemize this pain into love and understanding. In each part of the body is a lesson to learn about our true nature, our true desires for wholeness, for acceptance, for belonging. How profound it is, this existence. It's the great pain of feeling that we're separate from nature, feeling that we're separate from the universe. And in meditation, we remember that the body is not separate from nature. The body is a process of nature just like anything else, like the trees, like the clouds, like the rivers. If we can love the trees, the clouds, and the rivers, we can love our bodies. To see that our bodies are simply an extension and manifestation of nature arising out of the source of being, life, and consciousness itself. gratitude for your body, to bring in forgiveness, forgiveness for treating your body in a way that it didn't want to be treated. We didn't know any better at the time, and we just did what we thought we needed to do to feel safe. But now, right now, in this present moment, we can forgive and restore all the love that was once taken away from the body. All the unconscious contents, all the repressed and hidden parts of ourselves laying dormant, we can invite them to rise up to the surface. We can invite them to express themselves. So if you feel like you need to move any sort of way, allow yourself to move with your body. See where it wants to take you. Just be fully present. With it, fully present with yourself.
taking a few final moments to take note of where your body's at. Notice the places of tension. Notice the places of openness. If you now ask your body, what do you need from me? How do you feel? Notice how it responds. Notice the pattern of the beating of your heart, its rhythm, its pulse, the flowing of your breath, how all these processes work spontaneously and effortlessly. And when we connect to our bodies, knowing that we're not just connecting to ourselves, but we're connecting to the entire universe, the earth, Gaia, the whole universe, can be felt in the pulse of our heart, in the flow of our breath, the in and out, the yin, the yang. Feeling the empty space. When you zoom far off uh, out from the body, there's empty space. And when you zoom in enough to the body, there's also empty space. We're mostly made of empty space. So feel the profound nature of this emptiness within you and the potential for this emptiness to contain space for form and movement. For the spacelessness to create space for form and the formless and timeless nature to create space for movement and continuity. How these dualities coalesce into a unity Notice how it feels to be fully present with yourself. Allowing any feelings, sensations, images, perceptions to arise from the unconscious into the light of your conscious awareness. Giving it space, giving it grace, love and understanding. Because in order to truly heal the body, we must first understand it. So we give that space for understanding. As we return to our conscious state of awareness in this room, in this space, uh, our lovely host, Rai, has prepared some sacred medicine for us here at Dear Eleanor. Um, we have some cacao to drink, uh, which has 
many healing properties and benefits for the body, mind, and soul. And if you're at home and you don't have your own cacao, that's fine. You can use it with any, any drink. Water, water is a very healing substance. Um, life couldn't exist without it, of course. And so if you'd like, you can do this same practice with water. Pouring yourself a glass of water. It's important for it to be in glass if possible. And you can hold that glass of water to your heart and sit in meditation, feeling the gratitude for your body, for the water inside of your body and for all the bodies of water throughout the universe. As you meditate with this water, just send all of your appreciation and energy into it. Feeling through the gratitude that you have not for only your being, but all the sentient beings of the universe. So you can begin this meditation with your sacred medicine. What does it look like? Notice its shape, its form, how it moves. What does it smell like? All the different sense perceptions. They all take us back to the same place, but through different means. Maybe you can look into your medicine and see what looks back at you perhaps as a reflection you see yourself in it see your own reflection so as you drink it you're drinking yourself <laughs> the universe is drinking itself <laughs> Feel as it flows through your body, providing nourishment. Nourishment that will allow you to provide the best healing to yourself, but also to others. Just take some time with it.
whenever you're ready, you can return to the room, to the space, noticing the difference before and after interacting with this medicine. Thank you so much. Thank yourself uh, for taking this journey. And for our final segment of this episode, we're going to have an interview with our guests, um, just talking about dreams, the imagination, spirituality, healing, all that good stuff. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Can we get a little round of applause for our two beautiful performers here? Amazing. Yeah. Weren't they beautiful? Incredible. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I was, I was blown away. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. I was in a total trance. <laughs> all, all the energies came together so beautifully. Well. All right, so I guess, yeah, we'll I get a couple microphones up here. Yeah. Just all gather around the little, little round table over here. <laughs> What do we feel? Little floor vibes? Floor vibes Christmas are good. Christmas applesauce? Floor vibes are great. Awesome. <laughs> I think we um, yeah, we're good. I think we can... Uh, we, could, we could work with these. Yeah, yeah. we could pass them around. I'm going to keep mine, though. <laughs> awesome. Amazing, amazing. Can we get another, one more time, just how stunning our two performances were today? <laughs> like, I'll ask Nico, which was your favorite part? My favorite part? Oh, man. That's got to be when the two of you were dancing together. That was my favorite part. That was that was awesome. I really felt the uh, felt the love, the connection. So that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, what I I really love the part when all of us were just like on percussion together, and just feeling the energy when you both were just getting on that hoop through that like very rhythmic and like powerful energy going on. I think that part was one of my favorite parts. Yeah, that was when they were dancing together. You stole my part. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. I love you, Nico. <laughs> How about yourself? I like the whole thing. It was, it was all in flow. So for me, although there were a couple moments where perhaps I, I stepped out of my full presence, like other than that, it was all just as good as the rest, you know? But I will say, I guess some standout moments perhaps was in the very beginning when I was laying down and a couple of you walked around with the sound healing instruments and I was just like being blessed. Like so hard. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It was like orgasmic in some like sound healing kind of way. It was really, awesome. yeah, it was a true blessing. Like I'm, I feel very honored to, to, to be here in the space. There's people online, which I'm sure is good for y'all, but yeah, I, yeah, what a, what a delight. And then the other moment that stood out for me, I mean, it was beautiful hearing your guidance. Like at first, I was like, "Is he reading off a piece of paper?" No, he's just flowing. And I was like, "It was really special." At first, I couldn't hear everything, but but then I I repositioned myself, was able to hear, and it was really inspiring. So thank you for that. Thank you. The flu, everything, so good. But then I was able to really drop in. Like the first performance I did was just I don't know. I just dropped into the to the sound, and like I've. I danced with it, which isn't something I've ever done on the lyra. I haven't really, I had like cool beats playing in the background, but this like really got me into a meditative dance with the lyra, which is my first time doing that. So thank you for holding space for that. Have you ever like looked at doing these like aerial arts in a meditative sense? In a meditative sense? Yeah, like as, like, as, a, as a form of meditation for yourself. Um, not the lira specifically, and even not aerial yoga, which is a class that I teach. 
but I mean, you know, there's flows that I teach and it's like breath to movement. So in some way, it's like a moving meditation, but you know, it's a different context. Like this for me was more meditational than I've ever done any kind of aerial practice before. Mary, no this is still work. Okay, this I think this works, right? Yeah, we can. Um, do. Yeah, so I kind of I definitely agree. Like the aerial yoga classes are a lot more meditative, um, and I feel whenever I do a lyra class, it's very instructional. It's like, okay, we're gonna learn on the we're, we're gonna practice the techniques. We're gonna learn a new move. We're going to get stronger. So I don't have a lot of chances to get on it and just kind of flow, practice, you know, feel within myself. So I think the first time I got on it, I was just kind of trying to find that energy and figure it out. And then the second time it's like, okay, well, now I already did it once. So now I can focus a little more on the music and the meditation, like thinking about like, okay, how is my body on this and how am I connecting to the music? So um, yeah, it was a great, great experience to have. Thank you very much. And then uh, Steven, anything you want to add? Um, well, first and foremost, you did a great job leading the, the meditation. Um, and I just love how we were all um, just synchronized with um, just the changes in tempo and the changes in emotion through the music and then through the interpretation of the music through, through um, dance. Is, is I think that's what that was, right? It was dance, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just beautiful to be able to kind of uh, move through these different rhythms and experiences and uh, yeah, uh, that, that in itself was pretty great. That was awesome. And it was fun jamming on the flute. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty fun. And the percussion, no, but definitely my favorite part was was when you both started dancing together and we were being very percussive and yeah. Percussion that was, was great. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely my Powerful. favorite. And yeah, shout out to Miami Community Radio. <laughs> it's giving my first time out here, so this is awesome for me. Yeah, now giving us a, they gave us a platform to bring out a bunch of wacky instruments, have some hoops and aerial arts in the air. It was just so grateful that Weather Spaces allow for this level of like experimentation and just play because that's all we're really doing we're just having fun like steven we got you on board for this event literally yes yesterday yesterday literally <laughs> yesterday yeah so it was like and i was super happy and stoked <laughs> to be able to do it <laughs> because i already knew what it entailed and i love this 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 kind of i love this kind of stuff it's communication you know so and i've never met both of you so it was just a way to communicate without ever really meeting it's like a language it's like its own language art you know whether it be dance music whatever the case is so it was a way for us to all communicate you know so yeah i was i knew it was going to be great amazing <laughs> for sure yeah i mean you said it's like we're playing and i think it's a dance not only between us two but with we're all dancing mm. together yeah. yeah and that's like the, the big path of this life is just to live in the right direction, but to dance along the way. Exactly, yeah. Well said, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we are called Dream Lab. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about dreams. Um, yeah, so I guess the question I had for all three of you would be what is, what is your relationship like with dreaming? Um, and I'll, I'll put imagination into that category as well, because the dream realm and the realm of the imagination are pretty similar, almost the same. What is your relationship with, with dreaming, and how does that inform your practice, your art? Do you want to start, Laurent? Sure. Dreaming, just dreaming, not like the actual sleep dreams, right? Oh, your time oh both. both. OK, well, that one can be very short, because I, I unfortunately don't remember many of my dreams, um, so I'll just kind of leave it there. Although, my friend was recently telling me about how he's really tuned into his dreams and he can lucid dream, and I'm just so jealous. And I'm like, do I really have to like write down every time I wake up, write my dreams down? Anyways, I'll get into that another day. But I think it's more interesting to, like the other part of the question is imagination, like life dreams and whatnot. And I guess imagination is something that I 
that I would certainly like to cultivate more of, to have more of like an expansive and creative imagination, you could say. I feel kind of limited in some way and in, I don't know, in some of my imaginative potential, perhaps. And, you know, some of that might be just like a self-limiting belief. I don't know. Sometimes I'm crazy and think of weird things, but yeah, it's something that has room for expansion, certainly. Imagination. And then dreams, like life dreams. It's funny because this is actually kind of one of them. And we'll see if I actually stick or like get re-inspired, but ultimately it's I don't technically have that much experience with Lyra. It's just a combination of my calisthenics strength training and like just like body mechanics and like learning how to wiggle my way around this hoop. Um, but what I'm getting at is I would love to be a performer, you know? For, like this is great. I'm, I don't care about having an audience, but like just dancing. And like I felt like I was performing it in the same way, but I was really just flowing. And at the end of the day, it would be really cool to be a performer and for for that to be one of my traits. If it if it's just like a, a thing that I get good at and that I appear, make appear special appearances, awesome. If it includes money, that'd be even awesomer. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's about that. Well yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Do you wanna go? Hi everyone. I would say um compared to Laurent, I'm actually very in tune with my dreams, like my sleep dreams. Um, I have a lot of dreams and a lot of weird dreams and a lot of my dreams, especially recently, have been very connected to my life. I recently, you know, switched jobs and so, you know, I'm starting something new this week and that's mm. been super scary but very exciting and lots of big changes. And so I've been dreaming about that and it's, mm. it's kind of stressful because you wake up and you're like, I didn't actually sleep. Like, this, this dream is, you know, these things that are on my mind and such, like, oh, I have to sign this or I have to call this person to make sure whatever uh, activity or check thing on the checklist I need to do is completed. So I was really thinking about that a lot. But on the flip side, since the Olympics were happening, I was experiencing a lot of that and it happened in in Paris, France, which I used to live in. So I was very familiar with all of the, the scenery, I had lots of friends who went to events, so I was pretty in tune and I, I kept dreaming about the Olympics as well. And I dreamt about Snoop Dogg and I dreamt, because he was on the Olympics the whole time. And I, I dreamt about all those things and like gymnastics. I love gymnastics. It's, it's very similar to Lyra and dance in a lot of ways. But I dreamt about that. But then it was combined with all of my life changes and such. Um, so you wake up and you feel confused. You're like, what does this mean? How, how can I understand this to, you know, it probably means nothing, but at the same time, you're like, okay, I just need to get this stressful, like get through this stressful part of my life so I can like finally relax. So I kind of got to the relax section at the moment, finally, but um, to, to point on the, the second part of what dreams are, also similar to Laurent, like the, the desire to perform is definitely there. And since moving to Miami, finding some more stable roots, um, you know, being connected to the art community, the dance community, the music community here, it's been awesome. And I've gotten way more opportunities to either perform or just, you know, jam with people, flow with people, um, and connect with other people who want to communicate through art. Um, so that's been super awesome to be a part of. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Steven, do you want to chime in? Do you want to go first, uh, Ray? Hey, the guest. Okay. We're leaving it for our guest first. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Um, uh, I love how you mention both types of dreams, you know, the dream of, like, aspirations and what you want to do and then just your actual dreams that you have at night. And dreams are just so interesting because there's, they're just as much a part of life as being awake and going through your day-to-day -day life. Um, and I also think it's very interesting how it varies from person to person. Like, for example, your dreams are very vivid and they're, um, it's, a, it's a part of your life. Like, you go to sleep, you wake up, you're like, wow, I had that dream. And then it's like this thing. And then for you, it's like you don't really remember most of your dreams. And, and it's... it's and, and I, I can also relate to that as well. There's been a lot of times in my life where I haven't been able to remember any of my dreams. And it's kind of interesting because it kind of puts something in your head 
where it's like, where, where are my dreams? Where am I? And then it starts to bleed into aspirations. What are my aspirations? What are my dreams? You know, it's very interesting. But then sometimes I have very powerful dreams that just come out of the blue like this. And then you know that it's, it's, it's telling you something, so to speak. Um, but the question was what my relationship is with dreams as an artist and how, what it, yeah, and what it means to me. Um, I'll, I'll say that, like, I've had a dream once where I dreamt something and I w woke up and I was like, I have to ma make this into a song. And I, and I did it immediately, like, the next day. But besides that, I wouldn't say that it has too much influence on my actual artistry itself. It's not something that I'm paying attention to and putting it into art form. I, I wouldn't say. I just think that my dreams are just these manifestations of my subconscious. And, um, and sometimes they show you some pretty cool, some pretty cool stuff. And yeah. sometimes it shows you some very overwhelming and may possibly scary things and, you know, uh, things that you have to see in your life, I guess. <laughs> if, if you'd be uh, open to sharing one of your dreams, like you feel like has had the most impact on your life mm. or has had a lot of impact or has had some profound yeah. nature, we'd love to hear it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the first dream that I think of and this is a dream I had years ago. I was little. I was probably, I don't even remember how old I was. I must have been like eight or nine or something like that. But at this time, no, sorry, I was definitely older, probably about 10, 11. I can't remember. But anyways, um, I used to love Guitar Hero. And I used to love, like, and, and I, I didn't even own the game yet, but I used to just watch YouTube videos of Guitar Hero. And then I used to get, like, a plastic sword, and I used to pretend play Guitar Hero while watching the YouTube video because I wanted it so bad. Anyways, I was obsessed with this game. And then one night I had a dream where... I was basically, uh, I was a spectator, so to speak, in the game. I was like the camera, you know? My physical form wasn't there. I was just the camera that is the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, anyways, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm, I am the camera, and I'm looking at the audience, and then there's the punk guy, you know, like in the Guitar Hero 3, it's this punk dude that's like the main, the main rocker. And, um, and he... I'm watching the game unfold, and he's playing, but he's missing all the notes. And then, um, you know, in Guitar Hero, when you miss all the notes, then everybody's booing at you, and then the screen pops up where it says, like, oh, do you want to try again or quit the game, etc." cetera. And um, he would miss the notes, and then the screen would pop up, but it would be in complete gibberish, and I didn't understand anything. And I would be so scared, and then I would, I would press any option because I didn't understand it and then the booze would intensify and then the audience would get even more angry and then it was like every single option I chose was just like getting more and more intense until I woke up and I was just drenched in sweat and just absolutely you know stunned um, thinking about it now I don't know what that meant but maybe it has to do with something about just being overwhelmed with the choices in your life and maybe like the the fear of am I doing the right thing and like the fear of uh, you know oh my god it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse with what I choose obviously I didn't think that as a kid but now just kind of looking at what that message could have been seems like that it's a fear that I think a lot of people have am I doing the right thing with my life oh should I have done this instead of that you know so yeah, I don't know. That's just yeah. that's one dream that, that I have. That's really profound. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. fear of judgment a lot. And, and I have a, I have a lot of dreams like that as yeah. well. I feel like this there's this archetype of dream. I don't know if it's a real archetype. I made it up, but it's this idea where you start something bad happens, but before the final thing happens, it kind of loops and it starts looping, and you're in this that transition stage of like. So, for example, I had this dream in high school that I was on a bridge of an interstate and I was falling off of the bridge. But before I got to the bottom, I would be back on the, the, the bridge, falling off again. And you know, it was just this cycle until I woke up and I felt awful. I was like, and actually I didn't want to drive on that bridge for a long time. I was very scared of bridges after that. But uh, mm. you know, I think it's, it's I have lots of similar dreams, kind of like with that same thing, or like, you know, the guitar here, it's like, you, you can't get out of this loop. And I think you said it really well, like some sort of fear. I get overwhelmed easily and, you know, choices are so hard to make sometimes. Yeah. 
It's, you know, and it's so funny. This has just been happening to me recently. Um, specifically, and it happens to me too, but with my girlfriend, you know, she'll be like, oh my God, was, should I have done this instead of that? And like this whole thing with choices. And then I guess what I've learned by watching this or like, you know, just wanting to console her is that any choice that you make is going to be perfectly fine. You know, we, I think we think so much about the choices that we make, but in reality, if we just follow our intuition and we just go with whatever it is that we just thought the first time or et cetera or whatever, it is going to, it's going to be okay. You just got to keep, you know, keep pushing through it. I think we, we think too much about the choices that we have or like, ah, oh, fuck, I should have done this. And like, ah, oh, no, you know, it's yeah, interesting. Absolutely. Do you have anything to add, Lauren? And there's always something that you could learn from whatever choice you make. Right, you know? exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's really interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah, what, what brings to mind when you talk about the loops is that um, altered states of consciousness seem to speed up the cycle in which we experience our karmic, karmic patterns. So it's like, even in waking state, we experience the loops, but they play out over a much longer period of time, so we, uh, we don't always notice them. Like one example is like relationships. It's like usually people end up in like similar relationship patterns and then it will end and then they experience these emotions and they find another person and then ends and they experience it. But in a dream, it might cycle through that really quickly. And also in like psychedelic states, it cycles through that quickly. So it seems to be embedded into the structure of our psyche. And I think the dream is catalyzing that process as a way to try to show us what we need to learn about ourselves, how we can heal a certain part of ourselves, certain insecurities. Um, and I think it's an amazing opportunity to learn about our, ourselves and, and how we can heal from those things. Yeah, yeah, that's just what it brought up for me. Do you have anything to add, Ryan? I think right, I think right now my brain just got caught up in the dreams going on. I honestly, I just started daydreaming. <laughs> oh yeah, what, what about? <laughs> honestly, stress. Mm. I feel like I have a lot of stress going on in my life and it's definitely affecting the flow of my thought process, my imagination and my dreams in the current moment. Like, I honestly, I feel like for myself, when I'm in a more clear headspace, my dreams flow more easily and I have more ability to remember what's happening compared to when I'm in a stressed out space. I don't feel like I have these profoundly stressful dreams, but I do have stressful like daydreams. Mm. So like, I, like my thought process might just like, my, like right now my brain was trying to focus in this current space being present here, but these daydreams were kind of like creeping into my mind and wanting to exact their stress on me. It was interesting kind of like just where my, my brain went during this conversation. <laughs> Would you say it's, there are some like anxious thoughts about things that you're working on or things that aren't working out or something like that? I, I think it's a level of just making a lot of commitments in the current moment and knowing that I'm doing this one beautiful thing that I committed to and feeling so much joy, but knowing that when we're done with this one, I gotta move on to my next task. And I'm trying to make a plan for it too. Yeah. <laughs> Life does Sleep feel like a to-do list sometimes. Very, yeah. very Sisyphusian of you. <laughs> There's always something to you. Always gotta push that boulder up the hill. Is, is sleep your next task, or is it actually a task? Honestly, it probably should be it sleep. Should probably. It should that's, probably. That's what mine is. I'm and then I guess some dreams will maybe come during that. Yeah. Well, also, I think dreams scientifically, they're supposed to be like your brain trying to process different things. And, you know, a lot, basically the file cabinet in your brain is able to sort through things and, you know, figure out the stresses, figure out the anxiety, figure out the transitions or the fear in your life. So, you know, dreams are super important, I think. And, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for adding that. I think a lot of the times it's overlooked the importance of our dreams. I mean, it is our own mind that's doing it. Um, so it makes sense that there would be some importance or to being able to understand ourselves better. Um, yeah. I'm going to dream tonight. I'm going to dream tonight. You watch. All right, yeah. So, so we're, we're just about wrapping up um, now. We got the signal. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> but, yeah, do you have anything to Thank say? Thank you all so much. I know.
Yes, I guess thank to you. Recap a little bit. This has been just such a beautiful night. I am like so happy. Mary and Laurent joined us for this experience. Like, I remember. Well, I think probably before our last show, um, coming into the space and noticing that we could hang something up here. And my initial thought was, what if we just hang a big art piece? I'm very happy with the big art piece. Can I hang on the art piece really quick? Can I hang on it? Is there, can, can you jump on? Yeah, can I, I hop on? I have definitely an art piece, right? You are too. <laughs> can I hop on real quick before we have to oh, that's, call out? That's fine with me. Um, thank you for having me, Ra. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's been so an good. absolute pleasure, man. Come over here. Thank you, Miami, Miami Community Radio. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm about to hop on this thing real quick. Yeah, thank you so much for all you tuning in online. It's been a really beautiful experience um, these past three episodes, and we feel honored to share this space with everyone. And yeah, stay tuned for stuff in the future, but stay in a state of awareness with yourself, with your body, with your mind, with your dreams. And we send you uh, infinite love. You Thank think? you. Can we do season two? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, we make good your season two? <laughs> uh.